long time no see for real this time it's been a good couple months but uh, i was planning on getting together with you all earlier than this but as you know uh with the circumstances being the way they were with liam leaving so late with the nfl season going so long um there was nothing we could do about that so um addressing that situation first of all thank you to liam um he did a remarkable job very very proud of the work that he did in the one year he was here uh, transformed our offense. Our guys believe in it. Uh, did a remarkable job and uh, greatly appreciate him and wish him nothing but the best of luck uh, as he moves on. Um, you know, very pleased. Uh, you know, really cannot be more thrilled uh, to uh, announce Rich uh, Scangriella as uh, the offensive coordinator. Um, it's pretty, uh, you know, remarkable that we're able to attract uh, a coordinator of his caliber. He has extensive experience in this system um, and, you know, really going back to uh, Atlanta in 2015 as a quality control coach, but uh, spent the last five years as a quarterback coach or offensive coordinator um, in the NFL and, and is just a remarkable quarterback coach and, and, a, and a great experience as a play caller. So uh, very excited about Rich and, and the experience that he brings and, uh, continuing uh, with with the system that we had in place for this year, of course, there's going to be some new twists, little you know, little changes, but in general, ex you know, same system, um, and that's the nice thing. It's you know, they speak the same language with Liam and with Rich and with the, in the two systems. There's 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 some differences, but it'll be easy carryover, and you know the. Uh, you know, the big thing is, is, you know, we do that all the time anyway. It's the same thing defensively. You keep the same system, but there's new wrinkles, new twists, you know, same with the offense. So uh, very pleased. I think it'll be a seamless transition. I've um, uh, been nothing but impressed uh, with Rich since he's uh, been on campus. He's hit the ground running, uh, got in town and and just wanted to hole up in his office and work and, and get ready to go. And, you know, had a team meeting today, introduced him to the team. He had an offensive meeting. We had uh, walkthroughs today, and so he got a chance to spend some time with our players and be around them and uh, get off to the uh, to the start. So we'll do that Tuesday. We'll do it Thursday, and then get back at spring practice next week. We'll have two practices before spring break. So um, after that, I'd like to uh, wish good luck to our players, having seven players at the Combine. Uh, starting today, uh, greatly appreciate those guys. I miss them. I uh, haven't seen them for a while, and I know they'll go and represent us the right way. Uh, that was seven last year that I think we ended up canceling it because of uh, COVID, but uh, we had seven players invited a year ago and seven again this year. It says it says uh, a lot about the, the development of our players, and again, appreciate our coaches, our strength and conditioning team, and uh, continuing to develop those guys. Um, uh, really need to recognize Josh once more uh, for winning the man of the year. Uh, remarkable young man. We we really miss him and his leadership and his presence. And uh, congratulations to him on that national award. So um, there's a lot to talk about. I guess I'll stop at that point and open it up to questions. Mark, how important was it to kind of, when you're going out and looking for a coach to stay, kind of in that Shanahan, I guess, McVay coaching tree? It was very important. Um, you know, when Liam was here and we lost our own line coach, you know, the first the first book we open is is was the 49ers. You know, that's the first first place we go. And uh, Liam, first place Liam went, and that's, you know, he brought up Zach, and then we did the research on Zach, and it was kind of a, a no-brainer to hire him as well. Uh, and then when I uh, come to find out that Rich had interest in this job, um, you know, it really happened fast. Uh, again, you're under some pressure just because of timing. I didn't, I didn't, you know, feel, you know, we, we had a good idea this could happen. And so we were keeping things, you know, fluid. I was keeping guys in mind and uh, it was remarkable the amount of candidates and the amount of people and the quality people that were interested in this job. Again, it says a lot about our coaches and our team and uh, the way they go do things to attract the people that we did. And, you know, but being so late, you know, you do feel a little, little, a little crunch, a little, little pressure to get things done. And, uh, you know, so I had a, uh, very good process of some very talented coaches and, uh, you know, although it's, uh, kind of 
time consuming and strenuous to go through, it's still uh, eye opening at times and very good to go through that process and just listen to the talented people and ideas and different things. And, uh, you know, once again, when when Rich and I connected, uh, things moved pretty fast after that. When spring practice opens next week and you're doing the offensive install. How, how much of this install is going to be feel brand new to the players? Some, but it's just it's tinkering. You know, what I mean, the the system is carryover. There's obviously the 49ers, you know, and the Rams are are different. You know what I mean? But there's a there's enough that carries over. Um, in the terminology, it's easier for our coaches to adapt to terminology than for all of our players to learn things over. You got to remember a year ago, just getting under center, we were unsure if we could get under center after spring. You know what I mean? So we, we, we were doing things out of pistol. We were exploring how to tweak it, how to handle things. And, uh, you know, just the terminology alone with formations and all the shifts and, you know, all the motions and the, the, the sets, um, you know, our players were just trying to learn things for for such a long time. Now we're trying to just, you know, be precise and take, take things to the next level. And the same with Will. You know, Will, you know, had to comprehend all of that. Now it's just every little detail and trying to get better. And, and Will doesn't do a thing without, you know, just, you know, he puts so much pressure on himself. Sometimes he probably needs to just play because he's that good but he's you know really trying to take his game to the next level and I think that's our entire offense now we have some new coaches and we have a lot of new players too so <laughs> it, it'll be it'll be seamless so is it uh, they're adapting the coaches are changing what they call things or that's correct yeah yeah a lot of it and we will do some different tags and do different calls I mean but our players will pick it up again there's enough new guys that that it's it's not a, a it's it's as seamless as we can get. Were you involved in the process? I did involve Will. I did. I just uh, felt like, uh, you know, I really wanted his input. You know, a year ago when I made this hire, I left and I went out and, and you know, nobody was involved. It was just, just myself. And uh, another guy came with me to help me with, um, you know, the film and notes and things. But uh, I wanted it that way. I wanted it to, you know, solely uh, my decision. I didn't want the the people in my ear. I just wanted to see it for myself. And uh, this year it was the complete opposite because we were building on something. And so then I wanted the input this year. And so I tried to incorporate a lot of the offensive coaches and, you know, when they can. I mean, obviously I made a lot of phone calls on my own and, uh, and things I had to do by myself, but you know, certain interviews, there was a lot of guys involved and as many as I could because I wanted some input. I mean, ultimately I was going to make the decision, but I wanted uh, to hear their thoughts. And so it was good for Will to listen in and just kind of, you know, just be a fly on the wall and listen to guys and, and give me his feedback. When you have a role, are you more comfortable just doing that on your own like in the first time? Well, again, I think different circumstances. A year ago, I, I, I had so much, uh, uh, you know, I had so much in my head and, uh, you know, we've been through a lot and we did been through a lot of good things. But think about those years and the way we had to evolve and the great job Eddie did with not having a quarterback and all those things. But systematically, I just wanted everything out of my head and I wanted to go talk to people and get a feel for it. I didn't want coaches telling me this. You know what I mean? Just influencing me. It's 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 my decision. You're gonna sink and swim with it. You know what I mean? As the head coach, and obviously it's our program, all of ours. And uh, but uh, but quite different this year. You know, because I wanted to build on the, on what we had. Why do you want to keep the uh, versatility of the you know, balancing offense? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, uh, the uniqueness of uh, San Francisco in that they uh, one of the few, if not the only team, to use the fullback in that scheme. Yeah. yeah. No, no. I mean that there's. We're not going to be sitting back there in 21 personnel much. So <laughs> we will be in 12, just like we were last year. So it's just how you utilize that guy. You know, whether it's a fullback or an H back, it's all the same. It's just semantics on certain things. But what attracts me about San, it no, no, no. But uh, it's 
yeah, we'll keep the balance. I mean, obviously, you know, I've been preaching that. And, uh, you know, I think there's continuity. I mean, you look at San Francisco, again, they're different than L.A., but uh, they're, more, you know, you know, more multiple in the run game in a very, very physical football team. But again, you know, we've been talking about that here for nine years now and trying to be physical and, and, and building off that. You know, what do we do well and how do we get better and take it to the next level? Obviously, last year, Liam did a great job with the play passes and the strikes and the things of that nature. So, um, you know, we'll continue to build on that. Scott will be in the same role that he was in last year, wide receiver coach. Mm-hmm. So much I know it was, some, yeah. yeah, could be, yeah, but I'm glad to keep Woody uh, around and he's very knowledgeable of the system and it's an easy carryover. Mm -hmm. Mark, you had so much success recruiting to this offense in the last year. How important was it to go to those guys, especially in the age of the transfer portal? What we've recruited you to do, we're still gonna, we're still gonna do that. Well, I think it was very important because there was a lot of buy-in. There was a lot of work. Our players were, were excited, but you ask them today, and I guarantee you they're just as excited today as they were a year ago when we installed for the first day. So that's the good thing uh, is that uh, we have a great group and we have a culture here that the guys enjoy being around each other. They work hard. They care about each other. I think we have some great additions, and you know. In in particular, Tavion and 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 Tyshawn and and uh, you know and the young guys that came in. I mean, they're very talented players at mid year, um, but you know we have we have good guys and you know they care. Like I said, they want to work and they're excited. And it doesn't take you long uh, when you're in, in a meeting with Rich and and you see the knowledge that's coming out of there. It's uh, it's pretty remarkable. You know it's. Uh, you know, you could ask Will, I don't mind, he puts it in his own words. I mean, we, we, were, we were attracted to a lot of good people. I was very impressed. You learn a lot. But it doesn't take long with this guy. Like, you realize real quick, he forgot more football than most of us know. Mm -hmm. Mark, were you surprised that Rich wanted the job? Was that kind of... That I was pleased. I was pleased. I was, I, was, I was excited. It's funny, Liam, you know... You guys heard that, but Liam helped me through the process too. It's really a unique situation. Most of the time, if any in, in, in our world, you get a job, you're here today, gone tomorrow. You know, and with Liam, with the with the way he was hired after the Super Bowl, he already knew Coach McVay. You know what I mean? So it was an easy transition. I'm sure Coach wanted to take a minute. You know what I mean? So Liam has had some time. It's kind of unique, but he's you know, so he's helped me through the process. And just just because I. Uh, you know, I'm very confident in him. We have a good relationship. And, uh, you know, he, he, he like, I, I, want, I just wanted his input. You know what I mean? I wanted somebody that was speaking the same language. And, and you know, when he and I, when I talked to him about Rich, we were both, like, very excited, you know, talking on the phone uh, late one evening. What are some of the benefits to having Rich and Yenzer work together last year come to Lexington? I think that's very important. Um you know, I don't know if it would have deal, been a deal breaker. I mean, you're going to talk to Rich and, you know, I'm pretty open about that. Guys can say what they want, you know what I mean? But I'm sure it was probably more attractive to him knowing that he had Zach here um, because, you know, it's, it, it's super important to have your offensive line coach and your offense coordinator on the same page. I mean, that's a whole major piece of this offense that he knows Zach's going to speak the same language and teach it the way he wants to be. I think that's the big thing with us now is taking it to another level, being precise, being detailed, and that's how you'll take it to another level and improve. Did, did you take you off guard? Did you expect that you needed to, to look for an online coach this offseason? Was that something you were anticipating? No, I didn't, but that you know, it, it, it worked out. You know, things happen for a reason. So, uh, you know, it's it's pretty great the way things worked out right now. So very excited about that. When you found an offensive line coach out of the Shanahan tree who had a viable tie to John Sharman, I mean, that must have felt like winning the lottery. It, it did. It was like, this is too good to be true. And then you get on the phone with him and, and he's just, he's remarkable. You know, he's, his knowledge of this system is through the roof, but then you, you take into consideration. I mean, he's, he reminds us so much of John 
And I hate to put that on him, but it's a compliment to him. I think we all know that. If you say that about anybody, you're, you're, you're patting them on the back pretty good. So, uh, you know, I think when, like I said, Liam and I, Liam brought to me, I mean, the first thing we do is open the book and look, you know, see who's at his tree that we can get. And uh, the fact that he was tied to Kentucky and tied to John, I mean, it was, it was an absolute no brainer. Specifically, what, what traits remind you? Well, besides the horses, then <laughs> uh, <laughs> the bourbon. No, no, no. They're just they're just great people. It doesn't take long. Again, you spend some time with Zach, and you're going to see a, a a guy that that genuinely cares. You know, his knowledge is there, and uh, his knowledge of the game, his passion for the game is there. Uh, but also that connection. He's a he's a great recruiter, and and uh, because he relates well to people. And I think uh, there's different styles, and uh, Coach Schlarman's style worked very well here. And Zach is a lot like him. Coach, right, so I know you mentioned you're looking forward, but that moment when Liam did leave, how tough was that? Just not only for, not only for you, but for Will and for C. Rob. You know, it was hard. Yeah, it was, definitely was. You know. Uh, I guess I could tell the story how it went, and Will, Will will attest to this. Will and I were in the uh, weight room, and I was, I was, I certainly wasn't working out, obviously, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but we're in the weight room, and I'm walking through just talking to guys and, you know, connecting with our players and, and just checking things out, and Will approached me, and he was like, what's going on? I was like, listen, Will, I'm like, you know, the guy's been unbelievably loyal to us. Has turned down NFL opportunities, has turned down college opportunities, didn't blink an eye. Tough decisions, but he showed extreme loyalty because of the situation. And he knew a year ago when I talked to him, I'm like, I need two years, you know, minimum. And, you know, sometimes you don't always get that. It, but and I was talk, talking to Will, literally talking to Will. And I said, you know, he's shown extreme loyalty. He's here. I said, we do have to worry about LA. You know what I mean? They just got done with the Super Bowl. I was there. And uh, this was maybe. Monday or Tuesday. I don't remember exactly what day it was uh, after the Super Bowl. Couldn't have been Monday. I traveled home on Monday. So maybe Tuesday, Tuesday morning. And, uh, you know, I'm talking to Will. I'm saying, we just got to ride out, you know, LA. I don't know. You know what I mean? Surely this guy spent, just went through an unbelievably long season. And I don't know what they're going to do. I said, so we'll see. As we were talking, I'm not shitting you. <laughs> he calls me. And I show Will. He's he just like, you gotta be kidding me. So, <laughs> so uh we were just talking about that and, and Liam really had no idea. I think he got a call late the night before. And um, you know, so he just found out I wanna say midnight the night before and uh that, that he that it was even a possibility, you know what I mean? And so um you know I'm not sure it was a done deal at that point in time, but you know, I know uh you know when I got the call from Sean that he was interested in talking to Liam, um, that, uh, you know, that I was disappointed, you know, obviously because we knew we had a good one, a great one. And, uh, but, you know, I'm really happy for him and I'm really happy the way things worked out. You know, things happen for a reason and we'll, we'll be fine no matter what. I mean, it, it's this culture, it's the, it's this organization. It's, there's a lot of things. I mean, you look at some a pretty successful team, one team in particular in this league and, and probably put Georgia in that along with Alabama. They get a turnover all the time and they continue to win. I mean, that says a lot for, for their program. And, and I wanted to do it that way where I continued the system. That makes it easier. Obviously, Will, you mentioned that if there is a downside of hiring NFL guys, they tend to go back to the NFL at some point. Exactly. Were there, was there any hesitation about that at all? Or do you think yeah. that if other teams, NFL teams want our coach, we're doing pretty well? Definitely. Yeah, I think whether it's a college system or an NFL system, if you have good people, you're going to, you, you, there's a good chance you could lose them. But again, that's okay. I mean, I, I greatly appreciate the coaches that were here going back to year one. And, um, you know, the time and the commitment that they give to us. And, um, you know, when they're here, you know, they, they, there's not been one guy through here that, that I didn't like working with. And uh, hopefully they grab some things that they can, you know, take with them. And I certainly learn from all the different coaches that are here. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. You know, um, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's something to be said. It's a compliment for, for our coordinator to be going to the, to the world champs as an as a, as a offense coordinator. I mean, it says something. But 
you know, when I made that move a year ago, I know what I'm getting into. Now, you know, you know, with Rich, I again wanted it to be a two year commitment minimum. And so, and then there's time to train all the other guys on your staff. And you know, I've done that defensively this year. And Liam and I've talked about that. I wanted to make sure, you know, that we had somebody in place and we didn't this year, but I will as we move forward. And this staff, the guys that I have on there right now will be trained to be coordinators. That piece of it, what, what, what's, is, is that the most integral part of, you know, when you see what the Alabama and Georgia, some of those things that like loser says every year, is that the piece of it that you, 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 you got to kind of cultivate to keep, you know, kind of get to where you want to get, or is there other? You're, you're going to get changed one of two ways, right? Not getting the job done or getting the job done, right? So if you're getting the job done, then you want to keep that continuity. Does that answer? No. You worked for your brother before, now he's going to work for you. What's the dynamic in, in the defensive coach's room when the boss's brother is in there? All good so far. <laughs> 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 Did you make him get coffee the first day? <laughs> no. No, um, no it's, it's, it's very good. Honestly, I really look at it, and I think Mike will tell you the same thing that that I look at it as an as another you know a coach. I have good relationships with the with the coaches. I treat him the same. He treats me the same. I mean, he's a, he's, a, I think, really eager in you know to be in a good situation again. And and uh, Mike is very professional, and you know he's working hard and wants to help any way he can. I think it's the right situation. We talked a couple of years ago, but we had uh, you know some guys in the room. We had some big pitcher guys in the room, and we had a lot of experience. And it wasn't the the job. And uh, as I mentioned, you know when you lose. Uh, Clank, you know, two years ago and you lose John, you know, now you need some some guys to step in. You know what I mean? The big picture guys that can help Brad. It's just you need you need all hands on deck. It's a tough job. And uh, so it's good to bring that experience in. And we're big recruiters, Clank and Summerall. Yeah. Mike, I don't know if he's been on the trail in a while. How has he been the recruiting? Right? Yeah, I think, you know, he ha you know, he has to be good, you know. We, we have to do good as a group. And I think our recruiting in, in general, if you look at it, we're, we're all hands on deck type of recruiting. It's not any one person. You know what I mean? The, the, the coaches will be the first one to tell you that. We, we dive in as an organization. There's people on, on our campus. They feel everybody's presence. And so it's, it's always a group. You know. Would you mind giving a quick breakdown of the seat? Sorry, Lonnie. Sorry, no, Lonnie. Go ahead. You're oh, Papa, Big blue wall is here. The mantra of uh, you know the nation of the blue wall. Mm -hmm. uh, Coach Yes Yes are coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, he has a little bit of a job in front of the attendant that uh, I'm sure it would never be an attraction for him to come here and, and, and build out. Um, I think he'll be just fine. Uh, Zach is is uh, got a a lot of experience, very confident in, in his approach and what he's doing. I'm confident in our players. Again, we have a strong culture. We have a strong offensive line culture. We do have some pieces. I mean, you know, you know, uh, that that was that was a hell of a group a year ago. I I could have coached them. You know what I mean? And so uh, you know that um, you know now we have some guys that uh, you know when when you when you're replacing three pros, you know you you got some work to do. Could you uh, run through? Quick, everyone at the combine, just what you think NFL teams are going to see out of Wanda, out of Darian, Logan? Well, I think, you know, I, I'm going to lump them together. I don't want to go, you know, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, I guess. I mean, <laughs> that's, you're asking seven questions. <laughs> so, uh, you know, Josh, Josh, uh, Pasco again, um, w we miss him, um, his presence. He was a three-time captain here. I believe that's the only time in history that we know team cap full season. I mean, it just says a lot about him. He wins the Jason Witten Man of the Year. Um, that's a tough guy to replace. You know, you don't replace him. You just hope his impact carries on with a lot of people. I think you'll see that. I, I think you'll see the way he impacted, you know, the defense, the team. You know, some of those things carried on. Uh, so we miss him. Yusuf, um, again, a guy that's played so much football for us. I can't tell you how much I appreciate him and just uh, a guy that um, just came to work every day. Really, you got to pull things out of Yusuf. And that's a confident guy that was, again, at least a three year starter, um, but played an awful lot of football for us and uh, just, a, just very reliable. You know, and, and a 
fantastic person and player. Luke, I mean, what what can you say about him? I mean, do you, do you get a better person than that? I'm not sure you can. You know, I want to grow up and be like him one day. Uh, just uh, the respect that he commands from everybody by the way he carries himself. A great player, uh, I think, really helped himself coming back for the super senior year. And I believe he's going to be an NFL player for a long time. And a uh, remarkable man. Um, Darian, again, just greatly appreciate Darian. The trust, Darian, the, the trust that he had to come back uh, for one more year. He didn't have to. I believe he helped himself. He was uh, a guy that was a, a high draft pick and um, and played all the way through. It says a lot about his character, again, to play in the bowl game and, um, you know, to sacrifice for his teammates and to finish his legacy the right way. Um, just really appreciate him. And the same can be said about Marquand. You know, he could have came back for one more, but played uh, in played in the bowl game, wanted to play well in the bowl game, you know, with that matchup, you know, with the Iowa Center and uh, Marquand uh, just uh, he's hard to replace the personality that he had, the impact, the suddenness that he plays with. Uh, great, great person. Uh, Wandel, uh, that was just like Liam. It was a quick, quick year, but thank I, I thank him, you know, for coming back and, and what he did and um you know, the impact that he had on our program in one year uh, was was greatly appreciated. He was another one that um, didn't say a word, just worked, just worked every day, tried to refine his skills, tried to get better every day, and had a big impact in one year. And uh, the same with Dare, one year uh, guy, but uh, came in and, and really helped us and uh, worked extremely hard. And, you know, was a, a, it's hard to play left tackle in this league. So, uh, that's the set. What can be impressed? Like, what do you think NFL teams are going to be impressed with with Wando when they see him this week? I think tomorrow. Well, I think you know it doesn't take long. You could watch the film and and see a guy that that uh, you know is productive. You know, it's that's the big thing is he's productive. He could get in and out of breaks. He could you know he he could uh, do a lot of things. You you could see that in this system. And there's so many coaches in this system in the NFL that it's going to help him uh, because he's a guy that could get open. He, uh, Drake Jackson, I believe, being added to your staff. It's now a few guys you've got that play for you here. How important is that to kind of build that, and what is Drake going to bring to the program as a coach? You know, really – you know, happy to have uh, Drake join our staff. He's a guy that I've known since he was in, I believe it was go eighth going into ninth, maybe ninth grade, you know, certainly when he was a freshman. And every year he came back to camp and, do, and, and you know, he was one of those guys along with his father that, that they went to a lot of camps and he just absorbed all the coaching, you know, from a young age, you know, he just, you could tell he would be a great coach one day because he was eaten up with it. And that's why he was such a great player is because he was a, he's a technique guy. And so he's, you know, even though he's young, you know, he really has a lot of experience because most people don't start when you're a freshman in high school, taking all those little, little things in like he did. And I saw that. I, I watched him do it, you know, for the, you know, it's, it's pretty remarkable that I've known the guy for, for that long now. I mean, it's eight years, probably well, eight, eight years. I mean, I've known him all through his high school and all through college, you know, so I've watched him. One last question. Sorry for trying to envision having Mike on your staff. The first time little brother has to really get after big brother. And I'm thinking, <laughs> as the youngest Stoops growing up, you probably had to. Hey, when, when you're this old and you're, you know, is it really bigger brother or older brother? I mean, really? I mean, you know, I, I, I think that that narrative needs to die because we're, we're both old, you know, <laughs> so, so, so and, 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 uh, I'm certainly big in a bad way, <laughs> in a bad way. I'm trying to work out. So let me get going. <laughs> All right. Thank you.